Okay, so I'm going to show you how I do friction welding. Right here you can see we've got a, just an ordinary rotary tool. They come with these collets. This is a pretty small one right here. This is for accommodating the 1.75 millimeter filament. So what you do is you just get a, a little bit of a length of filament. You clip it off with some pliers or cutters or whatever you've got on hand. You put the collet in first and gotta work that filament in there like that and then put this retainer on. Maybe pull it out a little bit. Tighten it down and then you're gonna want to try to get the you're going to want to try to get this filament to be as straight as possible because when it spins, if it's curved like that, you're not going to be able to get the filament to spin on a single spot. A little bit of uh, offset is sometimes good and as you practice with uh, friction welding, you're going, to, you're going to get a little feel for it and you're going to notice that a little bit of an offset actually helps make a better bead along your joints. But anyway, just try to get it as straight as possible. All right. All right, uh, the setting on this is two, which is kind of low. You could get it up a, a lot faster, but uh, start start slow and then work your way up. And make sure you're always wearing eye protection because the filament, no matter what kind of filament you're using, it'll break and it'll fly off. So make sure you're wearing eye protection. Make sure people in the room are either shielded from it where it will fly out or they're also wearing eye protection. Now we've got these two test pieces here, and this is a good this is a good use for all your failed prints and, and leftover plastic. Do some practicing with your friction welding. We're gonna weld it together along this joint, right along here. As you can see, when I'm actually uh, applying the bead, I'm doing a little bit of a kind of a circular motion. This is kind of like when you're welding with metals. Sometimes you'll see a welder doing a circular motion to get a circular bead along the joint. Now we've got this first joint here. We're going to do another one on the opposite side. Instead of going all the way around, we'll do some spot welds first to get the whole piece together and in place. So you can see I put the this back, this lever back, on this rotary tool, this is how you lock this in place. Loosen it up, pull the piece out a little bit more, give yourself some more length. Tighten it back down, turn it on. If you notice a lot of wobbling, just kind of straighten it out a little bit. Like I said, a little bit of wobble is okay. All right, so this is where we started. We're gonna do the opposite side. So we have this spot weld here and this one on this side and you can go all the way around once you get that in place it's not going to go anywhere and as a matter of fact I'm going to try to pull this apart and show you how much force you actually have to use to get this apart once it's done and then you can imagine if you did the whole weld how hard it would be to get it apart okay that's way way stronger than any glue that you're going to be using and it's you're using the same plastic that you're using to do 3D printing with, so friction welding ends up being a very useful technique. In case you're wondering where this process originated from, it started back in the 1950s. It was developed by the Russians, and then the Americans and the Europeans also began doing it. As you can see here in the video, that's a spinning piece of metal, red hot, and it's fusing all the metal, it's self-included along the joint with two adjoining pieces of metal. 
In this next video, you can see a robot controlling the same process, but along a curved joint, and it gives you the same nice, clean, perfect weld right there. For 3D printing, we can use this to make much larger projects than we could ever print out in our build space. This is a picture of our aerator. It's a working aerator. It's a very complicated uh, model, and there was no way we could print it all out like this. So we printed it in pieces and we friction welded it together. This is a picture of our centrifuge. We wanted to sandwich a piece of acrylic in between a top 3D printed cover and the bottom cover. In order to do this, we could have used glue, but we decided to use friction welding. When you use friction welding, once you're done uh, laying out your bead, that's it. It's done. It's, it's uh, strong, it's solid, and you can move on with your build. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. It's, it's instantly as strong as it's ever going to be. Both of these models are available for free at Thingiverse.com. We've got a lot of other models there for you to take a look at, download, share, modify. If you like the video, please like it and share it. That would be cool. We'd really appreciate that. We're going to put a lot of resources down in the video description down below, so check that out. We'll have our, our page on Thingiverse. We'll also show you where relevant articles are on our website, which is progressth.org. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time.